Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 105 of my poker vlog. For this episode, I cover a 2-5 session I played at Orange City Racing and Card Club, and I have a bunch of hands to go over, but before we get into it, I have two quick announcements. First, I'm happy to announce a new sponsor of the channel, Kung Fu Poker. This app is 100% free to use and uses 100% play money, so you don't have to reach into your wallet to play Texas Hold'em online and to improve your skills. I personally find it very beneficial to be able to practice when there's not real money at stake. It allows you the freedom to experiment and try new moves to be able to improve your poker skills. Each day you can get a free daily chip bonus so you can always have more ammunition in the tank and you can continue to battle to gain accolades such as World Series of Poker Rings, and this app is free to download at the Apple App Store or Google Play. My second announcement is that I've got my Instagram back. About two weeks ago it was hacked. I would just like a public service announcement that now I have regained control of it. I usually ask for subscriptions or likes when I post a video, but on this one I would simply just recommend everyone go check their security settings, update their passwords, add a two-factor authentication code or a security question, do what you can to protect your online identity because getting it hacked can be a complete nightmare. And now go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And without further ado, let's roll the tape. All right, we arrived back at our usual Stompy Grounds Orange City Racing and Card Club. Uh-oh, Ted's making the intro. And this is definitely gonna be an action-packed table as here we see a four-way all-in, so it's definitely a sign that we are at a very good table. But first hand of note, it folds to me in middle position, I have pocket queens, I raise to $20. Well, late position player, the button, and one of the blinds calls, so we're four ways to a flop of eight, five, three, two hearts. As I'm first to act, definitely gonna bet my overpair, do pretty standard half pot, I do this with all my overpairs, possibly ace, king, maybe ace, x of hearts, very balanced range in this spot. So I continue for $40. Well, two of the later position players decide to call. So we're actually still three ways to a turn card, which is the four of diamonds. Still a pretty good card for me. It is a single raised pot, so no one should have too many holdings that low. However, either one of my opponents could have a heart draw or a hand such as ace X. So I definitely want to size up here pretty big as the ace high holdings pick up a wheel draw and we definitely want to charge the heart draws. We do have a heart blocker, which is kind of relevant. Being pretty confident we still have the best hand, we bet $130. A little over half pot this time. And to this bet, 130. both players fold. We're starting out the session on a pretty good trajectory. Before the next hand of note. I'm in the big blind. There's one limp and it folds to me. I have King Jack offsuit. Gonna raise this one up. Two face cards versus single limp. Pretty good. I raise to $25. The limper decides to call, so we are heads up to a flop of King 9 5 Rainbow. Obviously, flopping top pair good kicker is pretty good. And I would say most of the time you should just bet your hand and play it standardly. But you can't always just bet when you have a good hand and check when you don't. You have to mix it up sometimes. This is one of the times where I'm going to check top pair and protect my checking range. I check. My opponent bets $35 over half pot. Kind of interesting, but I'm definitely not going to fold top pairs, especially when I check instead of bet myself. The turn is the three of clubs. Again, doesn't really complete any rational two pair combination, so pretty happy with that card. I check again as I no longer have the betting lead. And on this card, my opponent bets $50. So, bets twice. We decide to take our top pair and turn it into a check call hand. So, we call again. The river is another three. Actually, one of the safest runouts I could ever hope for. If we were ahead on the flop, we're definitely still ahead. For some reason, my opponent at 9-5, we just counterfeited him. So, that'd be pretty good, too. I checked my opponent a third time. On this card, my opponent decides to check it back. And I show my hand, and we are definitely good against pocket tens. Kind of a little bit underplayed to just limp call pocket tens, but it's fine. We'll take it. Next hand of note. With two limps, I'm on the button with queen 10 offsuit. I raised to $25. Definitely like playing hands from the button. So we'll widen our range a little bit from this position. Well, both the limpers call, so we're going three ways to a flop of queen 9-3. 
two spades. Now on this board, one of the opponents decides to lead for $50 and then it folds to me. I had seen this particular person lead with top pair many times. Usually when he did it, he had like top pair, no kicker. I saw him do it with queen deuce, jack five, random holdings where he just flopped top pair and decided to lead. So I'm actually pretty happy with my 10 kicker here. I think I'm definitely ahead of his range here. And it is possible he could be doing this with a flush draw or straight draw at this point as well. And the fact that it has like a $300 stack, I'm definitely looking to get it in as quickly as possible. So I raised to $150. My opponent does not take too long before jamming all in, to which I will happily call him off. The run out is pretty safe as we river trips. And my opponent has queen deuce of clubs so 10 will definitely play on this one and we are happy to watch an opponent's betting style and then being able to exploit it later on next interesting hand with one limp i'm in middle position with pocket jacks i raise to 25 dollars well the big blind three bets to 75 dollars and then it folds back to me honey you've got a big storm coming very few three bets at this table, so you definitely need to give them a bit of credibility when it happens. But even with that in mind, Jax is just too strong to fold to a single three bet. So I decide to make the call. When the flop is king nine eight, I expect my opponent to bet small here like 100% of the time. Like a 40 or $50 bet is pretty standard, especially if he's competent enough to three bet. But on this board, my opponent checks to me. Having plenty of showdown value and no real reason to bloat this pot any bigger than it already is with second pair i think it's fine to just check this one back and see what develops so that's what i do when it turns the ten of hearts and it gives me a open-ended straight draw i'm pretty happy with that one well now my opponent decides to pick up the betting lead he bets sixty dollars a delayed down bet from the pre-flop three better with the odds i'm getting having second pair and now an open-ended straight draw i think my hand is just too strong to fold so i make the call the river bricks out, five of diamonds does not help me at all. And to this card, my opponent bets $135. Now we're at kind of an interesting decision point. The three bet pre and then check on a king high board is definitely less than standard. You don't see it too much. This particular opponent was on his like third buy-in, I believe at the time, after having some pretty serious run bet in the first two. So that should just be a point of note in any decision making. You know, is this player widening because he's losing? Is he tightening because he's winning? Like, how's the previous hands influencing how he's playing in the future? Definitely something to always keep in mind. Sometimes opponents start to over bluff when they're trying to get back to even. So that's something that to take into consideration. Hands that I think my opponent would play the exact same way of three betting and then checking the flop are like ace, jack, ace, queen of spades, which are definitely possible as I don't have the jack of spades, as well as hands like ace, 10 suited. I do think it's possible my opponent could have a hand like pocket queen sometimes. So there is some merit to turning my hand into a bluff, especially as I double block the queen jack for the nuts, which I could easily have here. I do beat some natural bluffs and I do beat a little bit of value. And given the price I'm being laid, I think this one has to just be a call. And on this one, my opponent has ace king. He similarly to me took a top pair good kicker on the flop and added it to his checking range. I actually think my opponent played this hand pretty good and got pretty close to the maximum. So nice hand, sir. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Next hand of note. So with two limps to me, I'm in the cutoff with king queen off suit. I make it $25. Both limpers decide to call. So we're three ways to a flop of Replay. jack eight five two clubs. On this board, it checks to me. I'm going to take my hand and turn it into a bluff. Check. Two overs, backdoor clubs, backdoor Check. straight draw. Feels pretty good. You also have to turn hands with a lot of equity and just see bet and hope to win sometimes. 30. So I choose this hand to do it with. I bet $30. Well, the player from the queen 10 versus queen deuce hand now min raises me to $60. And it folds back to me. Well, even though I really don't have a hand... I do have position and a ton of backdoors and two over cards, which are likely going to be live regardless. So not going to give up just yet. I make the call. The turn is pretty much the best card in the deck for my specific hand. Ten of clubs gives me a flush draw, gives me open-ended, makes the board super scary and more dynamic. So I'm very happy with that turn card. But it doesn't seem to slow my opponent down because now he bets $100. Now it's on me. I think calling here would be a mistake. As we've seen, he likes to just 
turn his top pairs into fast and aggressive lines. So if we think that he just has top pair no kicker as he has in the past and no clubs, I think a raise here can get him to fold a lot of the times. If he does not have any clubs, then he could, in his mind, be drawing completely dead. And if he simply has top pair, I'll have over 40% equity to crack him by the river. So I definitely want to raise here and give myself a little bit of fold equity. Hopefully get him out of there and win with a really nice bluff here. I raised to $280. I think even if he calls here, there are plenty of river cards that I'll be able to throw out another barrel and actually get him to fold. Like an additional 10 or 8 would be pretty good continuation bluff cards. As well as my 9 ace, king, queen, and any club which would likely just give me the winner. But luckily it does not come to that. My opponent decides to fold. So definitely happy to get a pretty creative bluff through. Next, interesting hand. I am under the gun with ace, ten of diamonds. Definitely a very strong hand, but actually could sometimes fold it under the gun versus a very tough table. I decided to just raise this one to $20, as there has been very few three bets at this table. I'm not too worried about getting punished. And four other players call, so we're going five ways to a flop of... 10-5 deuce, two hearts. So this is ironically a board that should not connect to me too much, yet somehow I still have top pair, top kicker. Should not really bet into four players all too often, even with top pair, top kicker. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But I do want to make sure heart draws do not get a free card, or for some reason my opponent had like ace three, ace four for gut shots and stuff. So I'm going to go a little bit over half pot. I bet $60. Well, only the big blind decides to call, which is... Actually pretty good for me. I get to play the rest of the hand in position, which is awesome. When the turn is the Queen of Hearts, very bad card. Obvious flush draw gets there, and it's an over card. He checks to me. I'm not going to bloat this pot anymore, as my hand has been significantly reduced in its value. I check it back, and the river is the Queen of Clubs. On this card, my opponent bets $75. Even though the obvious flush draw got there, and... He could easily have had a flusher on the flop. I feel like he would bet more than $75 if he made his flush. As I really shouldn't have a set where the running board pair matters. And you definitely want to get paid with it. Additionally, I think this bet is pretty much often like a 10 with a worse kicker. Like a 10 jack or 10 king or something like that. I think my hand's ahead of all of his 10x and maybe even 5x. Is that still only third pair? And the size of the pot and the price. I think it's a pretty easy call at this point. So I make the call. And my opponent had pocket sixes. So we are taking another one down. Running very well in this session today. And the stack's looking pretty good in for only $700. So we'll take it. Always nice to book a win. So next hand of note. And this one is a doozy. With one limp, I'm on the button with King Queen of Hearts. I raise to $20. The limper is the only caller, so we are going heads up to a flop, where we flop a full house. When my opponent checks to me, having the entire board locked up and then some, I don't really see a way I can bet here and get much of anything to pay me off. So I'm definitely going to check this one back. Hope to induce my opponent to throw out a bet on the turn card. Well, when the turn is a six of diamonds, and now there's two possible flush draws on board, kind of surprised to see my opponent check to me. But either way, we definitely have to go for some level of value. And he gets some amount of money when we flop a full house. So I bet $25, and I am happily surprised to see my opponent raise to $85. Still not even sure what exactly he can have, but happy to see it. I'm going to make the call and hopefully he can pile it in on the river. When the river is the nine of spades, my opponent stacks all his chips into a single pile besides the one and two dollar chips and then slides it into the middle and then tries to slide the ones and twos in the middle. Fortunately, it being a string bet, the ones and twos don't play. Turns out I'm greedy and I take no prisoners and his $150 bet I'm going to raise to about $180. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. My opponent hymns and haws and thinks about it for a long time, keeps thinking it's super unlucky that I have ace-queen, and I'm like, nope, don't have that. And my opponent eventually does make the call. Having trip queens with a 10 kicker does not beat the full house. It's definitely a cooler I'm really happy to be on the right side of, and we take down another decent-sized pot. And now the stack is pretty good. It's about $1,600 from a $700 buy-in before a final hand of note. With a button straddle, I look down at pocket aces. 
What could make this session better than winning a final big hand with pocket aces? Well, after I raise to 30, a late position player raises to 90. And then the button decides to call. Go ahead. Make my day. And it's back on me. So this pot's pretty big. And we haven't even seen a flop yet. And I have aces. Definitely going to go for a very large size 4 bet as... I really don't want to see this hand three ways, and we'd like to pile as much money into the middle right now as possible. So I raised to $525. Not sure if this size is good or not. I just wanted to make sure I could get a pretty good stack to pot ratio to be able to jam on pretty much any flop that I feel comfortable with. To my surprise, the late position player decides to jam over top the four bet. And he's got like a $2,000 stack. Like he's the only person that covers me at the table. And now I'm feeling kind of bad. Like my aces might get cracked after all the work I've done to build up this stack. And now the button goes into the tank. The button thinks for like two or three minutes. It'll be okay. Everything's gonna be okay, all right? What the fuck is going on? I can't believe that he's thinking this long. It's a five bet jam. And I have aces, so I don't even know what he could have. But after a decent amount of thinking, he eventually folds. Never gonna not go all in pre with aces. So I make the call. Just hoping to not see one particular card on the flop. If I don't see that card, I'm going to have a huge payday. And of course, the flop is king high. I, I slip a little bit and let an audible F-bomb land. Because there's only one hand I think my opponent could ever have here. And it has me drawing to two outs. The run out, also pretty bad. And for some reason, my opponent jams with jacks. Also lose. Sliver of hope leans into me like maybe you could have pocket queens luckily for me he also had pocket aces so i get to chop 90 bucks of dead money from the button who laments and scorns and can't believe that he folded pocket kings now some people might say like what the hell never fold pocket kings ever i mean it's a five bed jam you're ever gonna call a five bet with kings at two five stakes i mean you can you're pretty much always running into aces sometimes you run into aces twice but either way definitely happy to get that fold happy to not lose my entire stack at the end of the session and which means we're into the game for 700 dollars out of the game for 1610 which is a profit of 910 dollars we're there for only three hours very quick session which equated to 303 dollars an hour or 60 big blinds an hour so definitely not a bad session very happy to book this win if you've made it all the way to this point thank you i appreciate it please remember to go update all your security settings i can't stress enough how irritating it can be to get something hacked and i will see you all on the next one thank you